Yeah, welcome everybody. Welcome to another episode of my podcast about living faith in secular culture. Uh, today again, I have an English speaking guest with me, a good friend of mine for some years, uh, Margarita from Ukraine. We've been doing a lot of tours, uh, evangelizing in Germany, and I also visited her art festival that she will explain a little bit, I guess, also in this episode. And so it's it's great to have you here. Cool. Thank you for inviting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, normally I always ask my guests first, uh, tell a little bit about your story. How did you find out about faith? What was your life before? And why is it so important for you to like share the gospel to people? Uh, so I grew up in a non-Christian family. Uh, because I'm from Ukraine, most of people who came from atheistic background. So I grew up in a very good family, but we never go to church we didn't believe in god we never read bible so i was like sure that um, everything is good in my life and uh, uh, when i was teenager i was starting thinking about sense of life what should i do what is the, my goal and i was trying to okay i want to change the world because i have some uh, i saw a lot of bad things happening in the world and I was trying to do good things for people, but when you do good things for people and they are not uh, thankful or they are bad for you, you become upset. And I started to think, oh, it doesn't work any at all. So, and at that same time, uh, my brother started uh, believing Jesus and um, he heard gospel from our neighbor and he with mom they started go to church they started growing faith and they invited me sometimes to the church but uh, when i came i i was feeling something but still i wasn't uh, too close to god to open my heart and later it was children's camp and my mom invited me to be involved in helping kids and do some uh, art things with kids and I think okay I'll go and in this camp I saw Christ in people so I saw that those Christians they have something special that I don't have so they have uh, love for people for everyone and it's not because those people are their relatives or those people have done something good to them it's because just they have the, this love and I started to understand that maybe this true love of Jesus could change uh, people's heart and that's what I need to change the world and I started to think about God and after this camp I decided okay God if you exist please help me to grow in faith because it was hard for me immediately believe that God exists so I started to go to the church read Bible and was praying like God give me the faith and as it's written in the Bible when you are uh, in God's word so I, <laughs> I started to um, like trying to find Jesus and when you are doing small step, Jesus is doing several steps to you. Uh, mm -hmm. So from those moments I started growing faith and suddenly uh, I, can't, I can't say when exactly, but maybe after half of a year, year, I suddenly recognized that I believe. And I suddenly recognized that everything that's written in the Bible before this was it was like a fairy tales for me but now it become like a real story and because i have seen many uh, change lives of people and i started to change my heart and also i saw that i'm the same sinner as others Be before this i was thinking that i'm perfect person but when i started reading bible i recognized that proud judgment unforgiveness and lying is the same scene like killing people or addiction so it's it's the same things and i need jesus as much and more as anyone else so i'm also a sinner and without jesus there is no any other hope to come to the heaven and when, after this when i understand i ask jesus come to my heart that's my story and I, I was at your uh, your town and I was what, what really impressed me a lot was that you guys just kind of created a church right was that you did did you create that with your brother or did that your brother create that before you were uh, going to... so we were going to more traditional church mm -hmm. and later we understand that um, 
most churches of my city they are not concentrated on serving young people and uh, uh, that our city needs some new church for uh, like concentrated in uh, in uh, serving young people and um, what I found that usually when I invite people to church uh, they came to church and the other Christians who have been many years going to church they came to them and they told oh you need change this you need change this mm -hmm. and person is the just first time when person came to the church and it makes them uncomfortable when people whom they don't know they just came and tell what they need to change and it's the first time when they come to church so i understand that it will be hard for those people to stay longer in the church and for changing in their life they need to be accepted they need to feel love they need to feel something not just uh, uh, that they feel that they're in a church but they need to feel that they are in family <laughs> something mm -hmm. like this yeah and this uh, uh, this idea came to me my brother to many young people uh, at the same time so it was like i think seven people from uh, from the church who decided to start a new church yeah and we started a new church that was mostly concentrated on reaching young people but now we have different people so now we are maybe 40 people right now and all of those people they are not uh, from christian background and they are not someone who was from other churches so they are like uh, someone to, who came to jesus uh, from atheistic background oh that's cool that's really cool did uh, how did that work did uh, was it hard for you at first to start this but also for the other churches that didn't know what you're doing because i think this this looks a little bit like uh, the the church i come from jesus freaks you just did something you know you just started something without knowing how to do it basically and you said but we need this this people need a different kind of church to be welcomed you know something like this in the beginning, uh, Poltava churches, many Poltava churches, they were like, what they are doing? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but because uh, we were uh, doing uh, small steps and uh, we were not focused on reaching uh, people from other churches, you know how sometimes so they found that we are not against them and we are mm -hmm. not doing something against uh, and to, to take their young people. So, and later they saw that. Uh, it's uh, really fruitful and also what uh, in the beginning was difficult uh, for us uh, because we didn't have anything we didn't have any equipment we even didn't have a place where to uh, do um, sunday sermon but uh, uh, god provided everything and uh, the, mo the main thing that is needed is people it's not uh, equipment it's not money it's like people who are having those hearts uh, to reach young people Mm -hmm. and of course uh, we were trying to um, be close to jesus and to live how bible says so that's why other churches they were looking on us and they um, they were trying to find something maybe what we are doing wrong but they couldn't see this and uh, uh, till, uh, till now we are good friends with many pastors and uh, my brother who's right now pastor of our church uh, he is in a uh, past uh, meeting every i think two weeks they, so he, uh, we are doing many projects right now together with other churches so we are not against anyone uh, we are together with others so uh, in the beginning they were a little bit okay let's look what they are doing but later they saw that we, we are like normal church but we are just reaching special type of people well that's cool that they accepted you that's, that's not something that's happening in all the places some places churches like this are like yeah so like, usually yeah. we do even some festivals and events together with um with other churches maybe once uh, um, twice a year we do some events so it's very cool to do things together that's very cool so how did your journey continue uh, then after you founded the church and stuff like that uh, my personal journey continue yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. When I found Jesus and I started to understand that, oh, uh, God loves me, but he also loves other people. And I couldn't just uh, live for myself. I need to share gospel with others. So I started to share gospel with others. And in the beginning, it was only mostly talking and conversations. But later in 2012, uh, when I finished Taigi Mission School in Germany, I got the idea that I could also use my gifts to serve God. So I am 
painter, I'm architect, so I decided to create uh, some um, some ministry called Art Show. It's a live painting in front of people. So God gave me this idea. It was uh, hard in the beginning to start mm -hmm. doing this, uh, but I was doing from small <laughs> from small steps, from events in my church, from church uh, outreaches in Poltava, and. Um, it started to grow and God gave new and new ideas and after this um, uh, I also uh, started go to other cities and also go with uh, tours uh, in other countries using my talent. That's how it happened. You also created a, a whole festival, right? Yes, also after <laughs> finishing Stagy Mission School, when I came back to Ukraine, I told my church, I told my friends about uh, that we could do some event in the center of uh, my city, some kind of festival. And now it's um, more events like this, but in those times it wasn't a lot of events like this in my city. So I decided uh, to share this idea with my friends and we decided to start a festival. Mm, and the main idea was reaching young people, uh, not, not only young people, everyone, uh, through talents, through mm, our gifts, uh, and show them that God is creator, God is someone who gave us talents, and he wants to use those ta talents for worship his glory. And uh, we started this festival in 2014, and uh, the last year, I think, was 2019. Uh, before, so after Corona started, we stopped doing festival. It was a little bit complicated, but for several, I think six or seven, seven years, we were doing this festival, and it was really fruitful. And uh, thousands of people heard gospel, and even some came to faith and become part of our church. Mm -hmm. It's, it's it's cool that you also I was there visiting the festival so I saw it and it's really cool that you guys are including all, all, all the especially young people of the church that you give them some responsibility to take care of some stage or some area of the festival and I think this is really encouraging to to the people in your church especially the young people. Yeah, is, mm -hmm. it, is it also some kind of concept that you think is important? And yeah, the, like the main idea was that uh, each of person from church who want to lead some territory could do it and we, we will try to help as much as possible and you don't even need to be a professional on this topic you just need to invite some professionals uh, to the territory for which you want to be responsible so if you're responsible for example for mm, music territory uh, you are you, you find someone and invite them and they will come uh, so the main was to show that it's not margarita or it's not pasta mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it's uh, all of us we are the team and we are working together to support each other and be together mm -hmm. so it's it's pretty much inspired by the slot festival of poland yeah you do yeah, like yeah, it, a lot of practical things yeah it was inspired by slot festival in poland but of course it's not the same because it's another <laughs> culture and other situation we didn't have uh, as much as a uh, slot festival but for my city who is not as big as <laughs> capital so mm. uh, it was great yeah many even non-christian government people they get to know about our church because we were starting doing this festival and till now they know that we were doing this and they were really impressed that we were not just preaching gospel not just mm. trying to teach them but we were giving something to our city and after this preaching gospel so you don't have to listen if you don't want and also we were doing this with a love, we taking care about people, and people were really happy. Mm -hmm. Do you just remember some stories what happened on this festival? Even maybe some people uh, that you can think of that uh, went through a transformation by helping in this festival or something like this. Uh, yeah, one of the most <laughs> powerful story that I like about this festival is how in the second year of the festival, one guy from. Uh, my church came to me and told let's uh, do the uh, IT yard so let's do the territory for 
people who are working on IT technologies and I was thinking how it will be. <laughs> so uh, those people who work in computers, they usually don't like to go out, they are staying at homes. And um, this guy, he was not professional. He was, uh, I think, on the second year of studying IT mm. in university. And he was a young guy. I told, okay, if you will take responsibility, if you have idea, try to do this. And he was trying as much as possible. So he invited a lot of uh, Poltava IT companies to join this event. And um, it was one of the biggest territories. Uh, the first year it was one of the biggest territories. Uh, even uh, like many IT programmers, they came. I think uh, this territory was like 100 people who were sitting on the table, uh, on, on uh, sitting on their chairs and listening, listening. So and they get a re he invited really good speakers. So he's not someone who's uh, famous, but he invited famous people, and mm. they came for free. And uh, even one company helped us a little bit financially. And um, um, we were thinking, like, we are doing this, but at the same time, we want to preach gospel. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day of each day it was two days of festival at the end of each day when the territory is uh, uh, closed uh, we were having like a small concert in the center so everyone from territories could come to this concert and in those concerts we were mostly concentrated on preaching gospel using our gifts so um, it was different music art dancing and at the end i was painting uh, art show and I was painting face of Jesus and we talk about how Jesus could change our life and one guy who was working in IT company and company who helped us financially he came after I finished painting Jesus face and he started to ask me questions and uh, uh, he was touched by this picture and he was touched that we are not just social uh, people but we are also Christians and at the same time pastor uh, and my brother pastor of church he came and he uh, I told oh it's a pastor of our church and he was a little bit shocked because my brother has uh, long dreadlocks and it's uh, <laughs> it's very special for Ukraine that pastor has dreadlocks and at the same time during the whole festival my brother was like MC like talking to people leading the territory so no one was thinking that he is a pastor of the church <laughs> he didn't look like pastor uh, but he was preaching uh, at the end of the festival and this guy he was really touched by what he heard and he thought oh can i come to your church and they started to talk and late next day this uh, it was sunday and this guy came to church and he gave his life to christ oh, cool. and later he become baptized and uh, later he become like one of a uh, person who is really involved in many ministries in the churches in the church until now this guy is following jesus and um, like uh, i'm really inspired that we did this festival we did this territory of course not not all people they came to faith but it's some seeds that we are putting in hearts of people and uh, um, i believe that one day it will bring fruit so this guy was ready and fruit appears someone wasn't ready to accept jesus but it's still important to do such events mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's really cool that you guys are doing it. What what do you think are the most challenging things in in, 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 in creating such a festival? Because I think it, it's it's not not a lot of people just do that. Like <laughs> like just okay, let's do a festival. Let's use what we have and let's go for it. What what um, do you think is the one challenge? One of the most important that the whole team uh, will be inspired and have idea. Mm. Uh, for example, now after Corona many people are a little bit like not upset but don't know what to do mm. and uh, uh, like now we are trying to come back to those <laughs> time when we were inspired you know um, and uh, uh, for uh, for uh, for us it's important that the whole team wouldn't be afraid the whole team will feel uh, presence of God will have those ideas not be like uh, okay what we need to do uh, so the main is the team and other things like uh, all finances all things that we need 
uh, this will come if we we'll have a team. So mm. the main important important is to have the team, and all other moments uh, it's not as much important. Of course, uh, it's important to have finances, but. Uh, <laughs> what we were doing, we were uh, borrowing things from others. So all equipment we borrowed from other churches of Poltava. A lot of mm -hmm. chairs uh, we borrowed from some social organizations. Mm -hmm. So in reality, we were doing some festi the festival that looks like we spent uh, thousands of thousands of money, but in reality, we spent much less mm -hmm. because we were borrowing, th borrowing things from our friends and friends know what, what we are doing, why we are doing. And those friends, not all of them are Christians, but they were giving us things for free. They were giving us very expensive equipment for free. And this is That's miracle. Cool. But That's this really cool. comes when you have a team, when you have team and people see that things that you are doing, you, you are not taking money from this, you are doing this something for city. So that's that's how it happened. The main is to have a team, a team who have vision, who is inspired by God. Mm -hmm. And also that's like that's behind the vision kind of yeah that's mm -hmm. kind of their own thing it's not uh, the margarita festival yeah, and I yeah. Hope it's yeah, my if, festival it's even my if it's, thing you know if it's margarita who has million of dollars <laughs> this wouldn't happen mm. it's better uh, team with without a huge amount of money but team the most important is to have a team and of course <laughs> one of the most important is uh, that it will be in the will of god Mm -hmm. So we need to feel that it's a will of God that we need to do it right now. For example, this year we wasn't sure about doing it because of Corona, because of uh, it's um, now a huge uh, amount of uh, different festivals happening in the city. So uh, on those times it was not as much uh, festivals, but now many secular festivals are happening. Nope. Mm, so it's... Uh, little bit hard sometimes to um how it's uh, uh, to to be in the uh, in the good level mm -hmm. yeah so mm -hmm. they have like those festivals are happening they have a huge amount of money uh, and uh, they pay people so uh, that's why we are st uh, still praying and thinking when we could do something like our Potawa festival maybe next year but we don't want to do this only because we have to do mm -hmm. we want the team to feel that we need to do it right now we want to feel that god presence here yeah, god want us to do this or maybe we wouldn't do such big things maybe we'll do something smaller mm -hmm. but uh, see how fruitful it, it is because not uh, we don't want to do something just to tell all oh, people we are still doing this no yeah, we, yeah. we want to make sure that it's the right time for this yeah that's that's a that's a good plan <laughs> sometimes things can also just you do it just because you think oh, okay we have mm -hmm. to continue and, and no one even wants to do it anymore and we are here now in the taco tour so how did you get to know taco and all this stuff uh, at the same time in 2012 when i was in stagy mission school i met dave wilson and dave um, and dave uh, was preaching about reaching Muslim countries, about uh, uh, telling about Jesus to people who have never heard about this. So this mm -hmm. touched me a lot. And after I came back to Ukraine, uh, I was uh, praying, thinking and uh, asking God, God, do you want me to go to Muslim countries? And uh, uh, I was praying and I was still f have this feeling inside of my heart. So I decided, okay, God, if you want me to go, uh, I will write Dave, I wrote him a letter and told I want to join uh, your team and came to Turkey. So it was uh, in the beginning of 2013 when I first arrived to Turkey with my friend and one, mm, one guy. So it was three of us and we joined one German team uh, and we were doing something in the streets of uh, Turkey, of Istanbul. And, uh, I was totally sure that I need to come back. And next year when we came back, I decided to bring my painting materials. Uh, mm -hmm. And it was just the beginning of my art show experience, but I decided to do this. And um, it was exactly what I was feeling I need to do in the future. Mm -hmm. What What is uh, taco in, in Turkey? So how did you experience it? Because 
people might not know. I know Taco uh, and David. Taco, it's a, uh, it's a mm, ministry that's uh, concentrated. Um, like main focus of it is reaching Muslims using creative arts and using uh, talents that uh, what we have. So preaching gospel through our talents. Mm -hmm. And it's based in Turkey, of course. Like Dave, mm -hmm. I will also have him on the podcast uh, sometime soon. And or, or I already had. I don't know how I'm airing this, but um, it's uh, he has been living in Turkey for like 30 years, trying to reach Muslim people and with his wife and several other people. So and it's really inspiring to see how he, what he's doing and how he's interacting with culture there with. Uh, learning the language with being kind of more Turkish than uh, American <laughs> in a way. So I will have him on the podcast so you will get to know more about him. Yeah, um, yeah. but um, how did it continue? So this was the beginning of uh, this taco thing. And yeah, it was the beginning. And after my second coming to Turkey, I was having like the question to God, God, do you really want me to continue coming to Turkey because uh, it's expensive. I was working hard to raise money. So uh, on, on those period of time, I was working in universities and uh, uh, like each month I was putting some amount of money and um, I was asking God, do you really want me to continue or I should uh, continue only in Ukraine? And uh, is the is it any need for me to come back to Turkey? We were doing some stuff on the streets and uh, I haven't seen uh, people who came to faith uh, and I was asking God about this. And uh, God uh, answered me. It was very uh, wonderful answer. So uh, after um, I think two or three months when I came back to Turkey, uh, Dave wrote me that one guy, one man, I think one man was uh, baptized in the church and he is Iranian man and he had gospel first uh, uh, when I was painting Jesus uh, in the street of Istanbul cool. and this was answer on my question so I thought wow it doesn't happen very often Muslims are very mm, strong in their traditional moments mm -hmm. uh, so what we are doing most of the time, it's uh, planting seeds of faith and telling them about Jesus. And it's the first time when they hear about Jesus. So it doesn't mean that all of them accept Jesus. And this, uh, what happened with those men, uh, when I heard this, it was answered from God to me that I need to continue and that God really could work for my ministry, from things that I'm doing. And of course, uh, I was very inspired. I was very thankful to God. And at the same time, what happens in 2014, uh, we have a revolution, we have many problems in Ukraine, and dollars start to grow a lot. Uh, so, and my salary was the same. Mm. And later I even lost my job. So, and I started to think, oh God, maybe I would never come back to, um, to Turkey because it's it was looking like it's impossible because uh, all uh, like dollar raised more than on three times <laughs> so yeah, and yeah. salary was the same so I was thinking oh, I was working hard one year to come once uh, a year to the mission and now I need to work three years or <laughs> like mm, four years exactly, like it's yeah. like wow it's very hard and uh, uh, in those time uh, I was feeling that I. God wants me to be a missionary. I was praying and thinking about this. I lost my job. I was still continue, continuing uh, trying to find a new job, working in another place. But God was telling me all the time in my heart and many people told me that you need to be full-time missionary. And I wasn't listening to God. I was afraid about this like oh no i need to work hard and raise my own support mm -hmm. how will i found this and i was thinking oh in ukraine it's impossible to find support so i need to work <laughs> so i was putting more on my beliefs on my own mm -hmm. and uh, finally in 2017 i decided uh, to become full-time missionary and it was a hard step of faith um, even till now, it's uh, each month is a step of faith. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, 
after I decided to do this, I went to Germany first time together with Taco. So before this, I was in Germany in mission school, but together with Taco, it was in 2017. And after this tour, I like I understand that I need to continue, continue, and I'm trying to go to any tour with Taco. And at the same time, God gave me one more possibility in Ukraine to be part of Positive Show team. It's a team of creative uh, artists uh, who are preaching gospel in the uh, territories close to the war region. Uh, so they started their ministry when the war in Ukraine started and they asked me to join them and I joined them. And uh, when I'm in Ukraine, I'm going and touring with them and we are supporting local churches and local missionaries who are living close to the war territory and when taco has tours i am traveling with taco <laughs> so you're all the time on the on the road yeah. basically yeah <laughs> yeah that's that's really that's really cool what 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 are the like what are some stories that you experienced by doing this art show rather in the war territory i i saw some pictures with like Lots of uh, children also seeing this because the other guys are doing like some magical uh, illusionist tricks and having a lot of children there. And also in taco tours, what what can you remember any of the stories what happened that really that that you yeah that was really touching you yourself like. Uh, as for positive show tours, when we go to the close war territories, uh, each time is something special for me because uh, we used to go to small cities, to small villages where no one go and uh, these cities, uh, some of them uh, are ruined uh, by the war, some of them are still have uh, buildings and everything from communism time. Mm -hmm. So like really poor people live there and uh, no one uh, came there uh, like there is no any circus or any cinema, you know, like nothing happens. <laughs> no one takes care about those places. Mm -hmm. And when we came to those places, it's not a huge amount of people. It can be like 50, 100 people, but all of them came to things that we are doing and all of them are f uh, very thankful. And uh, mm, I like uh, the audience because uh, when we are performing in a big cities audience is like oh uh, i have seen something like this yeah, before course, yeah. but those uh, people who are living in small places they are so thankful they are so open they are much more open to gospel they are much more open uh, to hear something from us and uh, even uh, sometimes the places where we perform doesn't look nice it can be buildings without so for example sometimes uh, when we have um, christmas tours and it's a uh, winter time it's really cold and we came to the uh, some places where we perform it could be a church it could be school it could be like a concert hall building but they are all in a not a good quality <laughs> right mm, now course, yeah. and it could be winter with, and buildings don't some of buildings don't have the uh, central heat heating so it could be very cold there even so inside, when you, yeah, yeah, yeah so even inside and when you breathe uh, when you breathe it's like a uh it's the same like uh, outside so <laughs> everyone like this fog that yeah oh, yeah <laughs> so it's like it looks very strange and mm -hmm. sometimes once I was having a costume of Wonder Woman, we were doing program of um, superheroes celebrating Christmas and uh, the main idea was to show that only Jesus is a real superhero and all of us, we were uh, some crazy superheroes. I was Wonder Woman, uh, guys were like uh, Spider-Man, Batman, uh, Superman, uh, Flash, many other. And, uh, my costume, as you know, one woman costume is a little bit more for uh, summertime. Mm -hmm. And can you imagine me performing in this costume when the temperature is below zero? Oh. It's really cold. And uh, <laughs> I was breathing and it's a fog from my mouth. It was like, God, please protect me from getting <laughs> sick after this performance. And all of kids, they are in their winter coats. Quads, uh, with the hats, with the scarves, with the gloves, and they are sitting, they are waiting when we perform, 
and they they are so happy and the this presence of their happiness this presence of god who want them to know more about jesus this bring me some like a fire inside of me that i didn't become sick so it's a miracle and mm -hmm. this makes me very happy and i like those type of performances together with positive show team when we go to such places that look very <laughs> crazy and also roads are terrible there and uh, <laughs> if you came once to those places you will understand that those people <laughs> need jesus and yeah. they need to hear that god is together with them and god still take care about them even they are far uh, from uh, big cities but god still loves them mm -hmm. so that's what i like in positive show tours and, and on taco did you have, a, did you have um, some special taco he, story that sticks in your mind uh, in taco it's a huge amount of different stories <laughs> because we have been in many countries and each country is different mm -hmm. Uh, I like being in Germany because uh, uh, we could be as much um, opened. I like uh, that in Germany uh, we could preach gospel to Muslim uh, Muslim people very openly. But I also like coming to Albania. So Albania is Muslim country, but at the same time a secular country. So mm -hmm. that's why we could be open there, the same as in Germany. Uh, and people in Albania they are very excited on what we are doing and also uh, what i like in albania that um, uh, even after some of our ev events churches started so mm -hmm. they are using taco for um for starting new churches and that's what i like also i like um, uh, that presence of god could be even if the team is not a huge one and once uh, i was in albania and our team was really small because this tour was in october and, uh, and not a huge amount of people could came we have just uh, me as a painter uh, flesh really as a musician and several more musicians one singer so it was not a huge uh, amount of performance and we were thinking oh how how everything will happen and uh, later when i came back to ukraine i get to know from uh, that from one show from one place church was started so and wow. this happened you each tour uh, when we came to albania this happened so <laughs> that's why i like albania that's cool <laughs> also turkey is also a special country it's a little bit hard uh, to reach people there but as i told already story about uh, that all my journey with taco started from turkey it's still going on and uh, also once we were doing i remember once we were doing show and uh, later we get to know that some people uh, from our show came to jesus and become baptized and become full of jesus but we usually know about this several months or like half of a year hmm. later after the tour and uh, many other things happening in many countries i just uh, it's hard to tell all stories in the one they probably don't have Sorry. enough time for that yet <laughs> and one last question maybe would be uh, how would you encourage like young people no oh, maybe not necessarily young people but some christian people to live a kind of life like this you know how would you encourage people what would you tell people that may be listening to this now and maybe also thinking about oh i would like to do more for god or something like this but i mean yeah in, in situations whatever in family whatever you said you you are from ukraine you don't have any money to support yourself so it's probably not the, the it's you could have said uh, i cannot do this because you see my situation doesn't work something like this but you didn't do that you did a different way how would you encourage people to follow your example in a way i i want to say the first thing that is most important is to be in the will of god and ask god what he wants you to do so i have never dreamed to become a missionary i have never dreamed to travel a lot uh so now maybe some th people think oh she she likes to travel that's why she decided but it's not about me i was more person who like ukraine who like stay at home to serve in one place in one church and um uh, just uh, 
look uh, in your heart and ask God what he wants you to do uh, and ask what are your talents what are your gifts uh, and uh, not everyone need to go to Muslim countries or not everyone need to go out of their own country even uh, because all of us have different talents as for me uh, I get uh, um, I know English and at the same time I could paint so all of these uh, uh, talents if we put them together I understand that I could reach people who someone else couldn't reach mm. and I believe that maybe uh, some of you have some talents uh, to reach people whom I couldn't reach and it could be many types of talents it could be uh, playing chess uh, so you could read uh, you could reach people who play chess it could be playing soccer it could be many like uh, anything that come in your mind it could be uh, so just uh, ask God what he want how he want to use you and not try to copy my story because it's my story and sometimes we are inspired by someone we are trying to copy and after this it doesn't work and we become upset you could uh, try to call uh, just uh, try to be inspired and ask God what he wants you to do uh, because uh, uh, sometimes people want to go to Africa or to go to China or somewhere else and they are more thinking about traveling uh, mm -hmm. and, and they are not thinking about how they will do the whole ministry are they are ready are they ready to uh, live in other culture do they really love people from other cultures? So uh, just um, ask God what he wants you to do. Cool. Yeah. Thank you for the interview. It was really nice to talk to you. If you guys want to see some of the stuff that Margarita does, I will uh, put some links in the description of like Taco Tros. We have an English speaking uh, video of her shows that what she does. And also at uh, Artport Tafa Festival, I will put a link in. So you can see what she's doing and what Taco is doing. Yeah. Great to have you. Man. Thank you for inviting. Goodbye. Goodbye.